Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, just let me get this off my chest. I was wrong. Well, sort of. I did grossly underestimate how powerful these new Turing GPUs would be. And well, I'm the first to admit that. I did stress at the time that I was only guessing while making a number of assumptions, and you know what they say about those. But I was pretty confident in my claims. Uh, I think I was allowing the high prices, which really annoyed me at the time, uh, the one month pre-order period, and all the faffing about over ray tracing, all that stuff to sort of cloud my judgment a bit. And I did jump the gun on a few things. Having said that in my defense, I'm gonna defend myself ever so slightly, but I admit I was very much wrong on the performance claims, but I did have your best interests at heart. Uh, the theme in that video was don't pre-order, play it safe, make an informed purchase. After all, these aren't exactly cheap graphics cards. And I wasn't exactly wrong for questioning how much value they would ultimately offer. But as I said, the performance claims were a bit off. I was actually miles off on my RTX 2080 claim, which is quite interesting. And possibly more interesting is the fact that I wasn't that far off on my RTX 2080 Ti performance claim. So that's probably going to disappoint a few of you. Anyway, enough about that for now. Let's get to the results because I know you've had enough speculation, leaks, slides from NVIDIA, and even official information regarding specifications and pricing. So rather than go over any of that, I'm just gonna get straight into the benchmarks, starting with a few quick words on the test system. As usual, I'm using our Corsair GPU test system built inside the Crystal Series 570X with a Core i7-8700K clocked at five gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of Vengeance DDR4 3400 memory. For the AMD GPUs, I've used the Radeon Adrenaline Edition 18.9.1 driver, and for NVIDIA, the GeForce 399.24 driver, while the new GeForce RTX 20 series GPUs will be using driver version 411.51. In total, we have a dozen games to go over, along with a few other tests, then tomorrow we will unleash a mega 35 game benchmark. Okay, let's get to the results. Starting with the Battlefield 1 1440p results, we see that the RTX 2080 is able to deliver GTX 1080 Ti-like performance. Initially, I was worried that the 2080 would be slow in the 1080 Ti, placing it somewhere between the 1080 and 1080 Ti. Thankfully, though, it is better than that, and we see it delivering 27% more performance on the GTX 1080 when comparing the average frame rate, and 23% more for the frame time result. The 2080 Ti is an absolute beast here, beating both the 2080 and 1080 Ti by over a 25% margin. Pretty incredible stuff, but let's move on to 4K to see what happens there. Here, the GTX 2080, like the 1080 Ti, was able to provide player performance, rendering 24% more frames on average when compared to AMD's Radeon Vega 64 Liquid. But it was the 2080 Ti that again blew us away with an incredible 100 FPS on average at 4K in Battlefield 1 using the ultra quality settings. In fact, the frame time performance of the 2080 Ti was higher than that of the 1080 Ti's average frame rate. So that's pretty incredible. Moving on to Far Cry 5, and again, we see that the RTX 2080 is able to mirror the GTX 1080 Ti's performance with 112 FPS on average, making it 27% faster than the GTX 1080. As for the 2080 Ti, that pushed the average frame rate out to 132 FPS, but we are clearly running into a system bottleneck here as the frame time performance is similar to that of the 1080 Ti. Who would have thought that at 1440p using ultra quality settings that a 5 GHz all-core 8700K overclock would be holding things up? Moving to 4K relieves the system bottleneck, and now the 2080 Ti is 28% faster than the 1080 Ti on average, and 25% faster for the frame time result. The 2080 is also 30% faster than the GTX 1080, so another impressive result there. That said, while the 2080 does average 61 FPS, you will notice dips uh, slightly below that. Of course, it is still very playable, but it's not as silky smooth as the experience seen when using the 2080 Ti. That is truly breathtaking. Next up we have Armour 3, a title that's always heavily requested. Here we see at 1440p that we're certainly not GPU bound, it's quite clear that there's some other kind of system bottleneck or possibly even a limitation of the game itself. So we'll have to move to 4K to see what the new RTX GPUs can offer. Right, so at 4K we only see a slight drop in performance for the 2080 Ti when compared to the 1440p numbers just seen. This means it's now 30% faster than the 2080 and 1080 Ti. Meanwhile, the 2080 is 35% faster than the GTX 1080, and that is a pretty serious margin right there. 
Moving along, we have some Grand Theft Auto V results. And again, I know this is a seriously old title, but it's still very popular and you guys seem to absolutely lose your mind if I don't include it. So in an effort to keep the peace, here are the results. Also, please note the game has been maxed out, including all the advanced graphical settings. Despite that though, we are seeing a pretty heavy system bottleneck at 1440p, so the results here are somewhat useless. Though they do inform us that if you are a massive GTA 5 fan, and you only play at 1440p, then the RTX series won't really provide a noticeable performance boost. Once again, it is the 4K resolution that helps separate the RTXs from the GTXs. Here the 2080 Ti was 37% faster than the 1080 Ti, and that's a seriously nice gain. We also see that the 2080 roughly matched the 1080 Ti, placing it well ahead of the vanilla 1080, so an amazing result here. Hitman is yet another title that sees us somewhat CPU limited at 1440p, as here the 2080 Ti was just 8% faster than the 1080 Ti. So let's move to 4K to see if the more extreme resolution helps shift the focus towards the GPU. Once again, it is the 4K resolution that helps separate the RTXs from the GTXs. Here the 2080 Ti was 24% faster than the 1080 Ti, a decent performance jump, but not really enough to justify the price increase. Meanwhile, the 2080 roughly matched the 1080 Ti, making it 30% faster than the standard 1080, which is actually quite an impressive result. For the first time ever, No Man's Sky has found its way into our benchmarks. Quite a few viewers request that we test with the title, since it has been updated and apparently now it is actually pretty good. Performance with the new RTX graphics cards isn't bad either, the 2080 was a smidgen faster than the 1080 Ti, and this meant it was a whopping 49% faster than the 1080. Then at the very top of our graph we of course have the new RTX 2080 Ti which offered a 25% performance bump over the standard 2080. Increasing the resolution to 4K helped the 2080 Ti extend its lead ever so slightly over the 2080, now it's 27% faster. Meanwhile the 2080 beat the 1080 by a slightly less impressive 14% margin. The results seen when testing with Project Cars 2 aren't as impressive as we were expecting, and here we don't appear to be running into any kind of system bottleneck. The 2080 Ti was just 18% faster than the 1080 Ti, and the 2080 just 21% faster than the 1080. Apologies for all the 1080 and 2080s in this video, but there's really no way of getting around it. Anyway, hopping up to the 4K resolution did nothing to help out the 2080 Ti. Here it was less than 20% faster than the 1080 Ti, while the 2080 was now just 19% faster than the 1080. This could merely be a driver issue, or it could be that Turing isn't able to leverage the integer cores in this title. Next up we have Rainbow Six Siege, and this title's always leveraged the Radeon GPUs very well. Here we see Vega 56 matching the GTX 1080 and beating the 1070 Ti, something it doesn't often do. Turing does seem to correct this, and here we are seeing some pretty stellar gains over Pascal, even at 1440p. Here the 2080 Ti was almost 40% faster than the 1080 Ti, while the 2080 is 51% faster than the 1080. Those are some serious gains, and we see them continue at 4K, as the 2080 Ti is now 51% faster than the 1080 Ti, and the 2080 52% faster than the 1080. Again, those are some seriously impressive gains right there. I was shocked to see 145 FPS on average at 4K from the 2080 Ti. That is just mind-bending performance. Another new title that we're benchmarking for the first time is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and what an incredibly amazing looking game this one is. You'll certainly want to dial up the eye candy, and with the new RTX graphics cards that's not really a problem. Here we see that the 2080 again matched the 1080 Ti at 1440p, while the 2080 Ti was 24% faster, hitting 107 FPS. Even at 4K, the performance provided by the 2080 Ti is pretty unbelievable. 59 FPS on average with a 1% low result of 50 FPS in a game that looks this good. That's an incredible result, and if you drop the preset just one level to higher, the average frame rate jumps up to 80 FPS with a 1% low result of over 60 FPS. So again, really impressive performance at the 4K resolution. The 2080 also does quite well though. Like the 1080 Ti, you will at times notice the slight dip in frame rates, but I am of course being quite picky, and after all, these certainly aren't cheap graphics cards. Strange Brigade is a recently released title that we've already benchmarked quite extensively on the channel. Here we see that the RTX 2080 matches the 1080 Ti at 1440p, and this made it 36% faster than the GTX 1080. As impressive as 125 FPS on average is, the 2080 Ti absolutely blew that away with 163 FPS, making it 28% faster than the 1080 Ti. 
That margin is slightly reduced at 4K, down to 27%, but that still makes the 2080 Ti by far the fastest GPU in this test, pushing 94 FPS on average. The 2080 also managed 69 FPS on average with a 1% lower result of 59 FPS, so it also allowed for a nice smooth gaming experience at 4K. The second last game we're going to look at is Vermintide 2, and here the 2080 Ti rendered 133 FPS on average at 1440p, making it 25% faster than the 1080 Ti and 2080. Meanwhile, the 2080 was almost 40% faster than the 1080, so a pretty big step forward there. Vermintide 2 looks quite exceptional at 4K, and playing on an RTX 2080 Ti with over 60 FPS at all times was a bit special. It's an expensive experience, but damn does it look good. It's only 24% faster than the GTX 1080 Ti, but it makes a massive difference to gameplay. The 2080 was also just 17% faster than the 1080, but again, that made a huge difference to how well the game played. Finally, the last game that we're going to check out in this review is Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. And wow, just wow. Nvidia has focused on improving their async compute performance, and the results here just speak for themselves. Okay, so the 2080 Ti is averaging 200 and 73 FPS at 1440p using the maximum in-game quality settings. You'd be forgiven for thinking that Wolfenstein 2 must look like Fortnite. This made the 2080 Ti 41% faster than the 1080 Ti, while the 2080 was 49% faster than the 1080. However, those margins are further extended at 4K. Here the 2080 Ti is seen to be 55% faster than the 1080 Ti. That said, the 2080 maintains a similar lead over the 1080 as they were less CPU limited at the lower 1440p resolution. But seriously, can I just say, wow, one more time. Bloody hell, 170 FPS on average at 4K. I mean, the 1080 Ti was already blistering fast in this title, but 170 FPS with a 1% low of 152 FPS. Holy moly, that's fast. Of course, you can make the 2080 Ti a little bit faster by overclocking it, Though, as was the case with Pascal, they are pretty well tapped out. It was possible to increase the GDDR6 memory frequency by 650 MHz and the core by 190 MHz. This resulted in an average operating frequency of 1940 MHz for the cores when gaming. The vanilla 2080 accepted the same 650 MHz for the memory, but 120 MHz for the cores as the cores are clocked a little higher by default. This resulted in an average core clock frequency of 2150 MHz when gaming. Ultimately, what all this means is you're able to squeeze about 9% more frames out of the 2080 and 5% more out of the 2080 Ti when testing with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, not mind blowing, but it is extra performance for free. The 2080 Ti again saw a 5% boost from the overclock, uh, this time when testing with Strange Brigade. Meanwhile, the 2080 saw a similar 7% boost to performance. Again, not amazing, but it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. Moving on, here is an overview of the 2080 Ti and 2080 Founders Edition graphics cards, both stock and overclocked. As you can see, the operating temperatures only increased by 5 degrees when overclocked, and we saw a 6 to 12% increase in fan speed. I should note that the operating volumes for the Founders Edition models were very low. The cards are basically silent when installed in the system. Even at 2200 RPM, the dual fans can barely be heard. So quality-wise, the FE cards are good, but we still don't recommend you buy them, given that they cost more than the AIB models, and cards from MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, and so on are likely to be as good, if not better. The average operating frequency of the 2080 Ti was increased by 11%, and the 2080 by 12%. But of course, we've already looked at the resulting performance. The GDDR6 memory also ran at 7,650 MHz, once overclocked for a throughput of 15.3 gigabits per second. Oh, and I almost forgot, power consumption, we should probably touch on that. The RTX 2080 Ti is a bit of a power peak, pushing total system consumption up towards 500 watts, which is Vega 64 liquid territory. Of course, in terms of efficiency, it is worlds better, and I think we can accept this kind of power consumption given the resulting performance. After all, total system consumption was only up 15% from the 1080 Ti. Then we see that the RTX 2080 system configuration consumed 20% less power when compared to the GTX 1080 Ti, which is a reasonable improvement given it delivers comparable performance. Okay, so we've now looked at performance in a dozen games, and if you think the choice of titles seemed a bit 
odd, a bit random. Uh, please know that it's neither of those things. And in tomorrow's video, it will be a lot clearer as to why I chose the titles that I did for this video. I also only briefly touched on overclocking. I uh, really didn't go into any depth there at all. Just showed a few performance numbers and the frequencies that I got to, uh, which I'm pretty sure are the maximum frequencies that my cards could do without any really serious uh, modifications. But anyway, Tim will be following up on the channel in the next few days with some more in-depth overclocking content overclocking guides, perhaps, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, for now, we need to finish this review. So let's take a closer look at the performance breakdown. We did often find that the 2080 Ti was CPU bound at 1440p. So unsurprisingly, here it is just 23% faster than the 1080 Ti on average. That said, we do see examples of it providing games in excess of 30%, with Rainbow Six Siege and Wolfenstein being the standouts. Here we see that the same batch of tests run at 4K extends the lead out to 31%. So on average, the 2080 Ti is 31% faster than the 1080 Ti, according to our results. The most notable change here is Grand Theft Auto V. Previously, the 2080 Ti was just 1% faster as the system was heavily limiting performance. But now at 4K, it is able to provide 37% more performance. Again, Wolfenstein 2 is the standout result for the 2080 Ti, but it also does well in Rainbow Six Siege and No Man's Sky. Comparing the 2080 Ti and 2080 at 1440p provides similar results to what was seen when comparing the 2080 Ti and 1080 Ti. Here the 2080 Ti beats the standard version by a 21% margin on average. The margin is extended to 30% at 4K, and again this is because the 2080 Ti isn't limited by other components in the system. The 2080 Ti packs 48% more critical cores than the 2080, so a 30% performance uplift on average is what you'd probably expect to see. Now looking at the RTX 2080, we see that when compared to the 1080 Ti, it was just 1% faster on average at 1440p. Its only notable wins came in Rainbow Six Siege and Wolfenstein 2, while it was slower by a 5% margin or more in Hitman and Project Cars 2. The margin remains much the same at 4K, and so do the performance trends, so overall the 2080 is offering 1080 Ti like performance. When compared to the GTX 1080, the new 2080 was 29% faster on average at 1440p, which isn't bad and slightly better than the 23% gain the 2080 Ti provided over the 1080 Ti. Then finally, at 4K, the 2080 offered 34% more performance, which is certainly a very respectable gain. But then I suppose it really comes down to how they stack up in terms of cost per frame. So let's look at that now. Okay, so we're going to actually make a few cost per frame comparisons based on the 4K results just seen. First, let's look strictly at AIB MSRPs. That is the suggested retail price for NVIDIA's board partners like MSI, Gigabyte, and ASUS, for example. Added to the model names on the graphs axis are the MSRPs, so $1,000 US for the RTX 2080 Ti, for example. This means the 2080 Ti comes at a cost of $10.75 per frame based on the performance just seen. That figure alone means nothing, but when compared to the 1080 Ti, it means you're paying a 9% premium for the new flagship GPU. So although the MSRP has increased by 43%, given the additional performance, you're only paying 9% more. But of course, that's not really how we should look at this, given that Pascal is now a two-year-old architecture, but I will discuss that more later. The RTX 2080 comes in at a cost of $9.58 per frame, and that makes it just 4% more costly than the GTX 1080, and 3% cheaper than the GTX 1080 Ti. So that actually seems pretty good, and by all accounts it is. I mean, it's not exactly great progress as you're effectively paying GTX 1080 Ti money for GTX 1080 Ti performance. And well, we've had that for like a year and a half now. And it's worth noting that the situation gets much worse if we price in the Founders Edition models. The 2080 FE costs as much as an AIB 2080 Ti per frame. And then the $1,200 US 2080 Ti comes in at a staggering $12.90 per frame 31% more than the 1080 Ti. But yet again, it gets even worse than that because you're forced to pay the FE premium on all GeForce 20 series cards. So that being the case, let's take a look at the current market prices. This is what you can currently expect to pay for an RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti, and it's pretty brutal. The 2080 comes in at a cost of $11.50 per frame, making it worse value than Vega 64, and 20% more costly than a GTX 1080 Ti, again, for the same performance. The 2080 Ti is basically a break-even scenario. It's about 30% faster than the GTX 1080 Ti, and it costs about 35% more per frame. 
Of course, you will want to be able to use all that extra performance as it costs almost 80% more up front. It's meant to be something else that I'm supposed to cover in this review. What am I forgetting? It's meant to be some other big advantage of buying these new NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics cards. Oh, silly me, it's in the name, isn't it? Ray tracing. The RTX 2080 Ti packs 10 giga rays per second of ray tracing performance. And right now you can utilize a total of zero giga rays per second. Considering how much noise Nvidia has made about this technology, having spent the vast majority of the GeForce 20 series announcement talking about nothing else, uh, it's pretty shocking that every gamer who ordered one after seeing that amazing Star Wars demo that was basically running on a supercomputer, mind you, can't actually use the technology in any of their favorite games. In fact, right now we're waiting on a Windows 10 update, which is scheduled for release next month, before it's even possible to use the technology at all. But of course, we also need games, and frankly, the list of games advertised to include ray tracing at this point is pretty underwhelming. Currently, the list includes less than a dozen games, and they make up maybe a quarter of the hotly anticipated titles that will be released over the next year. Also, I'm going to risk making an assumption again, and that assumption is that most gamers aren't a fan of all games. So chances are there's only a couple of titles coming out over the next 12 months or so that support ray tracing that you'll actually want to play. One of the best looking games is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which can't actually support ray tracing till next month at the earliest, at which point most of you who want to play that game will have played that game. So going back and playing it again, just to check out ray tracing makes it more of a tech demo at that point. So it seems as we suspected, Nvidia made a heap of noise about ray tracing to justify the crazy high prices of these new GPUs. It's unlikely that many of you will want to or will be able to take advantage of ray tracing with the new GeForce 20 series GPUs. Of course, at this point, that's just speculation on my behalf. We will just have to wait and see. But already the games list is a pretty strong indicator that I'm probably not wrong on this one. DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling is another exciting new feature that we just can't test out yet outside of a few demos. And while the list of supported games is more extensive, it is also rather limited. So again, this is a bit of a wait and see situation. When it comes to our reviews here at Harbour Unboxed, we really only like to make recommendations based on the facts that we have at hand. Uh, which is why we were a little hesitant to recommend Ryzen initially as it wasn't really clear how long it would be before those extra cores would prove useful for gamers. In the case of these new GeForce RTX graphics cards, we can only base our assessment on the games tested as well as the current market prices. And well, that being the case, these new GeForce graphics cards, in my opinion, are a bit of a tough sell. And frankly, if I'd pre-ordered an RTX 2080, I'd be seriously considering cancelling that pre-order. Right now, it has to be said the RTX 2080 makes little sense. At the $700 AIB MSRP, it, it's okay, I, I guess. Uh, basically, it's a few percentage points better than a GTX 1080 Ti. And while the gains are impressive in titles such as Rainbow Six Siege and Wolfenstein 2, for the most part, the gains are very small, and we will better illustrate this in tomorrow's 35 game benchmark. So, as I said earlier, after a year and a half, we're getting GTX 1080 Ti like performance for GTX 1080 Ti money. But then, that's not even true, is it? We're getting GTX 1080 Ti Lite performance for a 20% price hike, and then the hope that ray tracing won't be a complete bust for this generation. So, after a year and a half of gaming with the GTX 1080 Ti, uh, color me rather unimpressed. But we do have the extremely impressive RTX 2080 Ti, the sock blower. I lost so many pairs of socks benchmarking this thing in a few dozen games that I've had to restock my drawer. It is a mighty impressive GPU in terms of performance. As we saw, it was on average 31% faster than the already fast GTX 1080 Ti. So finally, 4K high quality gaming on a single graphics card is now a reality. But it's a reality you'll probably need a second job to enjoy. At the $1,000 AIB MSRP, it's not too bad. As crazy as that sounds. You're still paying a premium, but it's less than 10% over the 1080 Ti. However, at the current market price, it's a bad joke. 35% premium over the 1080 Ti. No thank you, Nvidia. If you've got money to burn, then I guess the RTX 2080 Ti can be justified because, well, 
you're not really needing to justify anything. After all, a 4K 144Hz gaming monitor starts at $2,000, so I guess dropping $1,200 on a graphics card to make use of that won't really be an issue. For the rest of us, it's just not worth touching. AMD's Vega 64 is horrible value, and yet you'll be paying even more per frame for an RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. So, that's probably all you really need to know. Horrible pricing aside though, I am in awe of the performance these new GPUs can achieve, particularly the RTX 2080 Ti. Its 4K gaming performance really is unbelievably awesome. Even so, despite being completely wowed by the RTX 2080 Ti, and having admitted that I was wrong with my guesstimates at the start of this video as to how these cards would perform, I don't really regret being cautious. I Probably rather that I didn't speculate at all because that's something we almost never do here at Harbour Unboxed. But if I had to, which I have, so there's no going back on that now, uh, I'm glad I was well under, or not, yeah, I'm glad I was under. I was 10% under for the, the RTX 2080 Ti, and I'm glad I wasn't 10% over because that might have prompted some of you guys to pre order, and now you can make an informed buying decision. That being the case, if you were going to pull the trigger on, let's say the RTX 2080, or either of them really, but this is the one I'm probably most disappointed in because at least this one, although the pricing's even worse, it enables something that no other product does. So there's some, you can kind of justify the premium, I suppose. But anyway, let's not get into that. If you were going to pre-order this card or you are going to wait for the reviews and buy it, have the reviews changed your mind in any way or are you now on your way to buy an R RTX 2080. Let me know in the comment section down below because as always, I am very keen to hear your thoughts. And with that, I am going to end this video because I am absolutely knackered. I don't even know how many days we spent on this content piece or I spent on it. Tim's about to get busy because these cards are heading his way. But yeah, it was a fun but grueling couple of days of benchmarking and putting this content together. So I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, feel free to hit the like button for us. We greatly appreciate that. Subscribe for more content because you are not going to want to miss what we have coming on the channel tomorrow because that's the main reason why I haven't done much sleeping. And then after that, you might have noticed uh, this little guy, this little graphics card here. It's uh, the new MSI Gaming Trio. Or well, what is it? The, the Gaming X Trio. I forgot the X. You've got you to get the X in there. But... Uh, it's kind of a big graphics card. It's kind of a big RTX 2080 Ti, and it's possibly one of the best, the best one you can money can buy. It certainly certainly dwarfs the uh, foundation card. I thought this thing was heavy, but no, it's not heavy. Not heavy at all. It's quite light, in fact. So yeah, this will there'll be a review on this on the channel before too long. Can't wait to see what it can do. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if you appreciate the work we do at Harbour Unboxed, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to our Discord chat where you can ask us any questions directly there. We've got monthly live streams. It's all happening here at Harbour Unboxed. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you next time.